my mom came over this week and fertilized and deadheaded the roses <laughs> coming to help me get ready to move and um, I told her I can pack my stuff but I can't pack my stuff and get the garden to the point that I really want to hand it over I want to hand it over well like I want it to be in good shape and uh, she knows roses so she came and helped me with that so I have a lot of cherry tomatoes to pick and I figured if I was gonna be out here harvesting I might as well turn the camera on and we can chat and harvest so I keep getting sent this clip I guess it's TikTok, and there's a few different people who have done it. And I actually don't have TikTok, but uh, multiple people have sent me this clip where you take a block of feta cheese and you put it in a pan and you surround it in cherry tomatoes and you just bake it with, I think, olive oil and garlic and some herbs. And then you just toss pasta in it after it's baked and mix it all up. And that seems amazing. So I've got all these cherry tomatoes, and that seemed like a really easy dinner. So on the front end of today's video, I want to remind you guys that we currently have a pre-order for shirts open. It's about to close, maybe the day this video airs, um, and then it'll reopen. But if you're wanting to get in on that, it'll be shipped, you know, as soon as it closes, they'll start printing them. That way you won't have to wait as long. I'm trying to get some systems in order uh, to be able to share stuff like that more effectively because I don't want to be super redundant repeating it here but I'm constantly getting messages from people being like hey when's the next pre-order open while it's open and admittedly the housekeeping side of things is really not my strong suit I would rather just grow the tomatoes <laughs> So this is kind of interesting. I'm not going to eat this because this particular one was laying on the ground. But this is a volunteer tomato that came back uh, from last year. And it looks like a blue gold berry crossed with something. Because these are way bigger than the blue gold berries. I think that's kind of interesting. This one was on the ground and so it has some pretty gnarly bug damage. But might have to try to pull some seeds off of some of those. So Sweet Maya has been in South Carolina for 11 days. He's been there for 11 days and he took Benjamin with him. The way it is with my children, my little boys, I've got my three little boys. And <clears throat> I don't know if you've got multiple kids, maybe you've experienced this dynamic. All three of my kids together, there's more conflict. Like there's fighting, there's somebody being mad at somebody else, somebody being left out. But if you take one of them away um, and you just have two, doesn't matter which two, they get along just fine, completely great. And Benjamin struggled the most with Maya being out of town last time. Um, he really loves to help. He really loves to be like in the middle of the garden. Whenever Jeremiah's working on something, he likes to be right underfoot. But it's kind of hard, like I've been packing, and there's only so many jobs he can do. I've made jobs for him and let him help, but a lot of that stuff is decision making and making sure things are handled, you know, in a way that they're not going to break and all that. And uh, Maya decided to take Ben with him to help me be in a better position to get stuff done here, and also so Benjamin could handle it better. But that is the longest I have ever been away from Ben or Maya. Um, it's 11 days. We've never been apart that long since, I mean, since Ben was born, since Maya and I have been married. I did go to India a few years ago, and that was a nine day trip, so that was like the next longest, but this was definitely hard. And in the middle of it, which it is resolved now, I shared with you guys, but in the middle of that, uh, my dad had to go to the hospital uh, during his cancer treatments. And it was the kind of trip where like very grave language was being used. It was, it was really bad and Maya wasn't here. This has been kind of a trying couple of weeks just with everything. And I've been sharing a little bit of that with you guys. Of course, I don't go into great detail about Maya not being here when he's not here. 
I'm sure many of you have deductive reasoning skills and you can tell whenever he's not here because his truck's gone <laughs> because he's not in videos. <laughs> but i do prefer to wait until he's home to really bring a lot of attention to that and he will be here in a couple hours um so by the time this video goes up tomorrow he will be cozy in our bed or he'll be up by then <laughs> still i'm so excited i'm so ready for him to be home and thankfully that was the last long apart from each other trip from this point on we will be making trips together caravanning together and uh sticking together and i'm really glad just going through all of the logistics and all of that stuff of this move we knew it was going to be a big push we knew it was going to be hard and it has been but um but good too we've had so many details come together we've had so many people help us um, it's been a really sweet thing and I think in looking back on it, we will just really even remember this time very fondly. But in the thick of it, it has been a little bit testing at times. Y'all look at all that color, like treasure down there. Back when I first started gardening, oh man, I felt that spider web on my hand, <laughs> pulled it out so fast. Back when I first started gardening, a basket full of colorful cherry tomatoes was something that excited me more than pretty much anything. I knew, I knew that's what I wanted to grow was a variety of cherry tomatoes. And that's actually what kind of segued me into growing a variety of big tomatoes also. Back before I grew them, I don't think I'd ever really eaten any colorful big tomatoes. I can't really remember ever, maybe a couple of times. I bought like the heirloom tomatoes that they had at the farmer's market, but honestly they were just always so expensive that I never really bought them. However, I would get those little packages of cherry tomatoes at the store that were like, you know, those multicolored cherry tomatoes. Ooh, that one's not good anymore. And I loved them. And I remember the first year that I grew like 10 or 15 cherry tomato plants and I accomplished my basket full of colorful tomatoes. I remember coming in at one point and having like a big, probably like two gallon bowl full of cherry tomatoes after a harvest, kind of like this one. And I remember coming in and looking at it and like in my mind sectioning it up into those little four, three, four dollar containers and being like, I am tomato rich right now. Even these wily plants that are falling all over the place are still covered in fruit and it's so good. Oh, looky there. No, sir. You'll see that little guy. He's going to catch a quick flight over the fence to the ducks. Bugs. Oh, hello, goaties. Hello, little goaties. Here's my crazy, not touched, not pruned, not staked cherry tomato plant. Hey, girls. These are the tastiest tomatoes and they have produced so much. So I don't know if this is actually a fully fair experiment and I was thinking about it because I was saying this is completely unpruned and unsupported, but the way that it's laying here and draping over the raised bed, it kind of is supported by the raised bed, but still it gives you the idea of how a tomato plant would grow. Oh, there's a hornworm on this. I had a lot of them this year. Y'all see this damage? Like this, that is a sign of a hornworm. Sometimes I'll do videos where I'll find a hornworm damage, but I won't see the worm. And then someone will point it out in the video. They'll be like, look, it's right there at the bottom of the screen in this second. And then I'll go back and see, of course, by that point, it's the next day and he's probably ate another half of the plant. I pulled a few off here the other day with my black light, but it didn't have this damage then, so it must be more. I must have missed one. Don't know. Don't see it. My goodness. I have an audience. Are you guys hoping for a little snacky? So much fruit. When these get real dark orange, they're amazing. These sun gold ones. Let me see. What can I give to these girls? Come here. Come down here. How about this? How about a little mint? Mint snacks for everyone. Got some lemon balm too. There you go. 
the greens from my garden taste better than all those greens, apparently. Oh, a little melon. Hey, little guy. So, I have picked, let me see if I have a bucket to show you. I mean, really, what's the point of picking a lovely colorful tomato harvest if you're not gonna show it off? Pour it in this bucket. Oops, one of them mashed and sat there. <laughs> oh well. Y'all ready? So, this will be enough. I think this is a, remember. This is like a two or three gallon bucket. And, I don't know, that's, it, I don't know, maybe like a quart and a half or so of cherry tomatoes, maybe a little bit more, it's hard to tell. It, at least a couple pounds of them. And this will be plenty for dinner and then I'll put the rest on in a bowl on our kitchen counter and everybody will just eat them as they pass by. Including my sweet Benjamin, the greatest tomato eater of them all, who will be home tonight. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm excited? So I wanted to discuss something and I've really debated on whether I was gonna talk about it at all because it's really not the majority of people that are responding this way. And throughout the course of having this platform, if you're gonna have like a life out loud, live in a glass house, as I say, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna have like universal approval from people. And really when you open yourself up to, to receive feedback, which I totally do, um, some of it is gonna be negative or maybe not even negative, maybe just disagreeing, maybe just a different point of view. And I have genuinely grown so much from different points of view that it's worth it to me to leave myself open to some things that might even be hurtful in order to receive the positive because there's so much growth. But it, it has really challenged me to to really be confident in, in like where my identity is so that I'm not so easily swayed or moved by people who very casually voice maybe negative opinions. So we have a Facebook group, um, many of you are part of it. It's called Friends Roots and Refuge. And um, we invite people to have conversations there. We created it to create a community. We made, we made it a long time ago when our channel was a lot smaller and it has really grown. It's a very large community and um, we have a group of people who moderate it with us and help keep it as, you know, as safe of an environment as possible and, and really a refuge for people to come and make friends and discuss gardening and life and all the things pertaining to our channel. And there it has been like some discussion that's come up there pretty consistently since we announced that we were creating our show. The discussion is, it, what happens is, is it generally starts pretty innocently, but it continually goes in the same direction. Um, and the discussion is about money and finances and life choices, and it really has continually gone downhill into a lot of really intense accusation um, about our character, the character of our the, our friends and the people that we associate with and just all this stuff. And this is by no means the majority. This is genuinely compared to how many people signed up for our email list, for instance, the day that we announced our show, this is very much the minority. But what ends up happening whenever people start making accusations or sharing their opinions about things if they are negative is the people who care about us and love us and believe in us they end up engaging wanting to be defensive of us and it it ends up going to a nasty place and and that's just time consuming really um for moderators it's just time consuming and at first i didn't really want to address it because frankly I was raised that your finances are your business and they don't belong to anybody else and there's really no point in talking about things. And I actually still do believe that way. But I also see the heart behind the people who are trying to defend us. And I thought, you know what, I think that we could share some understanding here 
and the people who are going to be angry are still going to be angry. But at that point, the people who care about us and support us and are in our corner will understand where we are and also understand that I'm really just not that bothered by negative opinions. While this is pertaining to this one particular instance in my own life in this particular situation, I do think that maybe there could be some life advice interwoven throughout this video that you might be able to apply. So the first thing that I would love for people to understand, and we had mentioned a while ago that we were gonna do a video talking about like our five year vision. And we haven't done that yet. And the reason why is that we are actually launching a podcast. It's just gonna be available. And this is a premature announcement. Uh, we're not ready to announce it because we're not ready to start putting it out there yet. We have started recording some things. And essentially, Jeremiah and I wanted to give an opportunity for people to kind of come in to the discussion and this podcast is going to be more like a personal conversation just basically joining Jeremiah and I at the table for talking about things in our life as they unfold kind of going more in depth and some different uh, topics like our faith and our family and some different things that might not not fully just be the garden and the farm but also the garden and the farm and we really wanted to kick that off with sharing our five-year vision now I am um guilty of being the kind of person that'll have a big idea for how I want something to go and I will put it off until I can do it the way I want to. And that's kind of what's happened with this podcast. I really wanted to launch it, shoot a video of us recording it, and then that would be the first episode, but you could also watch it on video. Anyway, we're not there yet. We're in the middle of a massive move across the country. As you can understand, we've had a lot going on. That is coming down the road though, and that is something that's just going to be available to people. One of those things that we make uh, for people to be able to access for free. Now, I really did want that podcast and that announcement and that big layout of, of us dreaming. I really want that conversation to be with Maya here and both of us sharing it. But I will tell you a little bit because, and this isn't a surprise, we've talked about this in the past, like on live videos, we've mentioned it in different things for years. This has been on my heart. Uh, before our YouTube channel really even started to grow, it was on my heart. I want to build a learning center. Um, that's what Roots and Refuge ultimately is. Like the this this farm here on our house, this is Roots and Refuge Farm. We are Roots and Refuge Farm. Roots and Refuge Farm is our dream. And eventually, my idea is to have a beautiful piece of property, a large piece of property, that can be roots and refuge, that it will be um, a place that people can come and learn what they need to learn to go back to where they came from and create gardens and community gardens and places to practice regenerative agriculture. For a long time, I didn't understand. I had this dream in my heart, but I had no idea how in the world it would happen, one, financially, but also, like, I don't know all that stuff. Now, in growing here and growing in community and meeting different people, I realized that I don't have to know all that stuff. If my, if my calling is to take this influence on my life and funnel it into something and build something, maybe I'm just called to build the thing and, and teach what I have to teach, but also make a place that other people who have something to teach will have a place to teach it and where people can come and learn and connect and build community. And that has been my dream. And the other kind of part of that is not just a learning center, but I wanna also create a place that is a community place where people can come. Um, a place where there's a farm to table restaurant, um, a place that supports small businesses, a place where people can come and grocery shop. Like I have so many aspects of this big dream that I can see. And when I first started dreaming this dream, it was for all intents and purposes, completely impossible. Like I did not have the resources to make that happen. Um, again, I didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have the money. I did not have the reach. I had no idea how that would happen. But Instead of being like, that will never happen because that is not the way I think you should treat dreams. Instead, I took it and I just harbored that in my heart. I began to imagine what it would be like. I began to write it down. I began to uh, gather photos and stuff. And I have photos from years ago of like a massive glass greenhouse and of what I would want this building to look like and of what the commercial kitchen in it would look like where you could do classes teaching people fermentation and preservation and cooking and all of these things. And like I started to gather 
all of the ideas of like what the wildest dream of this thing would be. And that has been the last handful of years. And to be completely transparent, there were long periods of that where I could not see it coming together. I could not see that image that I had with this farm, with this dream that we had to move to South Carolina, with all of these different pieces, I couldn't see how those things connected. And there are some areas where I still don't. I still don't have the answers because it's not time yet. A lot of times whenever you have a dream and you just can't see how it's going to work out, it's because it's not time yet. And there, that is one of the beautiful lessons I've learned in the garden with plants. If you can't see where it keeps its seeds, it's not time to get them out yet. Don't worry, just wait. And eventually that plant is going to become very evidently full of seeds. At some point, you'll be able to see exactly where they are and where you take them. And then you're equipped for your next season. And that has become my way of dreaming. I can have the dream, I can anticipate the next season. If I don't see the link yet between where I am and where I wanna be, it's just not time yet, it's time to wait. And that's where we've been. And that is in a lot of ways where we still are. And I wanna make completely clear, um, because you know a lot of people will be really outspoken about how oh this used to be about the homesteading and now it's about business building or oh this you know you used to be wholesome and now you're you're selling things or this has become commercial and the fact of the matter is is no like it's still about homesteading but it's not just about me I am dreaming of something that is really really big and I'm not planning on robbing any banks to make it happen. Like, it's really, really big, and so what I'm gonna do is the next small thing in front of me that I know to do, and I'm gonna do it with as much integrity as possible. Yeah, we're gonna sell t-shirts, but we're gonna go with a small local business and, and say, hey, can you guys find t-shirts that are sourced ethically? That's the kind of thing that we're gonna do in taking the next right step. And I have complete peace about that. And truly, my stance is, if you look at a system and you say that system is broken, you can't cut the legs out from underneath anybody who stands up with the, with the desire to change the broken system. Because if you continually cut the legs out from underneath people who want to make a change and do it differently, because if you continue to cut the legs out from underneath anybody who stands up saying they wanna change the broken system, at some point you'll have to take some responsibility for the brokenness. And I'm not saying that anybody has to get behind us. I'm not saying that anybody has to get behind our friends or anybody. You are 100% within your right to make your choices. That's okay, and I completely support you. Um, follow your discernment, what it is that you're gonna do. That's completely okay, but we have to do the same thing. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I know us. I know me, and I know sweet Maya, and I love us, and I trust us, because I know who we're walking with, and I know that right now where we're standing was impossible. Guys, a few years ago, when I was buying those three or four dollar packs of the cherry tomatoes, the reason why I felt so rich when I had a whole gallon of them is because the grocery budget did not account for buying more than one pack maybe every other week. It wasn't have what you want whenever you want to have it. That wasn't the reality in our life. When I talk about how we came from much of nothing, we really did. And truly, I am so grateful for that because right now, um, whenever ugly people comment and say, I liked your content better when you were poor, I'm okay if that's how they feel. I'm completely okay. I do not have to take responsibility for their discomfort for where my life is right now. I like where my life is right now and I am so thankful for it. There's not a day that goes by that I do not feel completely overwhelmed with gratitude. I, I am, I'm so grateful. And that is where I wanted to give the piece of advice to those of you, and this is a piece of advice that I live by, okay? Now this is not to say that sometimes when people come with accusation, it doesn't sting. The day that I posted the video about our show and the messages, some of which were just concerned caution, which I understand and I assume positive intent from people so that I can live a happier life and so I assume they want what's best for us, I'm gonna believe that that's what it was. But some of the messages were extremely nasty and some of them were downright accusatory. And it came during that same exact little window of time that my dad went into the hospital and was having a bad time. Because this is how things happen. When it rains, it pours. Jeremiah had just gone out of town and it was just like bam, bam, bam. One head after the other. And I found myself in this place of being like, oh, Wow, this is a lot. But I had to come back to something that I know to be true. I'm sparkly, okay? And you should know this about yourself. You have a sparkle about you, okay? There is a light in you. There's a light in me, and I know that it's there. And when a person comes to you 
when you know you have a light and you know you have a sparkle and a person comes to you and they say, you're all darkness. What they are saying in that moment, if you know you have a sparkle and you know you have a light and a person stands in front of you and looks at you and says, you are darkness, okay? They are declaring their own lack of vision. They are not declaring anything at all about your sparkle. Just because someone cannot see you and cannot see the truth of you, when you know you have a sparkle, you do not believe someone else's lack of vision and believe when they call you darkness, because it's not true. Now you don't condemn them and you don't say they're bad or they're whatever. Don't call them darkness in return. In fact, the best thing to do is turn around and call the sparkle out in them. But sometimes you just have to say, you know what, that's not true about me. And that is 100% how I navigate a season like this that is completely overwhelming with so many things, how I stay grounded is I know that there's a light and I know that there's a sparkle and I know that there's a vision that ultimately is worth running businesses and coming out of our comfort zone and doing other things because right now, yeah, we're gonna go build a farm from scratch and we're gonna do it a heck of a lot faster than we did last time because yes, we have more resources now. Thank God, I'm so happy that we get to do that. But on the other side, like the big vision is that I'm gonna go build another place that I can teach lots and lots of people where I can take this influence that's on our life and funnel it into helping other people. And I'm gonna sparkle the whole way there because that is such a worthy dream and it is so lodged in my heart and has been lodged in my heart through disappointments and impossibilities and all of those things. That has been the dream and it still is and we're getting so close to it that right now I am just going to stay in that prayerful place. I'm gonna know that light is inside of me. I'm gonna follow what I believe is the will of God over our life and I'm gonna answer for all the times I get it right and that I get it wrong. It's gonna fall on us every time. <laughs> so I'm saying all of that and I really, again, I don't wanna to come to a place that I sound defensive. I'm not my defender, but ultimately I am so confident that we are getting to do something extraordinary in our life. We're getting to share something extraordinary. We're getting to encourage so many people. And along the way, as we build our farm and we go after the stream, I'm gonna to continue to teach people how to grow tomatoes. I'm gonna to continue to teach people how to dream and encourage them to be patient with their kids and to see the value in their relationships and to be kind to other people. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. And I do not ever expect to have universal approval and that's okay. And I don't expect for everybody to always be able to see the same thing that we do and, and agree with us. That's also okay. I don't think you have to have agreement to have relationships, but I do think understanding helps a lot. And that is why I decided to explain these things. If nothing else, so that the people who feel so um, intent on defending us, it's okay, you guys. Like, I love that you love us. I love your support of us. I feel so uplifted by this community. You know, I had that really hard, hard couple of days and I came on here and I talked about it in a video. And my inbox was just completely inundated with words of encouragement, people praying over us and, and sending us um, just things they felt like the Lord laid on their heart to send us. It was amazing. It was so, so amazing. I have never felt so surrounded by a community as I did that day. It was so incredible. But I just wanted to share my heart and offer some understanding and let you guys know, like, I really do understand. I understand that change is hard and I have a lot of grace for the people who are scared that we're gonna change or scared that things are gonna change or scared that something that was a constant and a comfort for them is gonna change because that's really a hard thing. And I also know a lot of people have good intentions and I appreciate that too and I can see the value in that. And for the people who are really just mean and there have been some of them, I am not gonna believe what they say about us over what I know about us. So it's okay. You do not have to come to our defense. We really are okay. Um, and I hope that you'll remember that as well because I know that that's just part of life. You are going to have to face people who cannot see you. And I hope that you will know in those moments that your sparkle is not defined by what other people say in you. Whenever somebody says you are dark when you know you're sparkly, it's because they're blind. So that is, uh, that's it. I didn't intend for that to be so long. I just wanted to get it off my chest. But I do want to say, and I hope you guys know that we are extraordinarily thankful for you. Um, I really do feel like 
what has happened in our life through our YouTube channel and through our brand go growing and through all the opportunity that has been placed before us. I believe that is the favor of God. I believe that is the blessing of God on our life and we do give him the glory for it. But I also know that he has used so many of you uh, to bless us and you guys, so many of you have seen value. Um, before maybe it was even completely evident. You saw value in so many of you. Are, um, you are the cheerleaders in our life that remind us that we sparkle whenever, whenever uh, that is called into question. And so I thank you so much for, um, for being on this journey with us. And right now, in probably the craziest time, I say, I keep saying this is the most uncomfortable time I've ever lived through voluntarily. Um, this transition is extremely uncomfortable, but we are at the verge of breaking into a beautiful, broad place that I am so excited to be. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.